All right, happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome to Couch Church once again, and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, this is Couch Church for Sunday, December 27th, and uh, maybe you're at this point now that uh, it's the third day of Christmas. You're thinking about returning some of the gifts that have been given to you. Uh, I've done a little research on this, and believe it or not, uh, there are uh, people who, re who return 15 to 30 percent of the gifts that they've been given at Christmas. Uh, this is really interesting and it, there's some corresponding research as well uh, that shows that one-third of presents that we receive are surprises. So could it be that we are returning a good percentage of the gifts that we never asked for in the first place? We didn't want it, we didn't say we wanted it, uh, but someone got it for us anyways, and so now we're taking it back to the store. Uh, a lot of us at Christmas, we don't like surprises. We want to know what we're getting. People ask us what we want, and we say, oh, whatever, you know, it's not about the gifts. Uh, and then we get surprised when we get something that we didn't want in the first place. So what I've learned is be very specific about what you want. Make a list and let people know so that there's no surprises. Uh, when Michelle asks me what I want for Christmas, uh, I really don't have a list, but I'll tell her something anyways, like um, socks, underwear, nose hair trimmer, that kind of stuff. Like At least there won't be any surprises. That's why we ask our kids, make a list, let us know what you really want for Christmas. So here's what I want you to do. Would you do this for me? I know some of you have some pretty great stories about uh, presents that you've returned in the past. So take a few seconds, would you, and tell us about a gift that you've received over the holidays in a past Christmas that almost immediately upon opening it, you knew you were gonna take it back. So what you can do is comment below uh, on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page and let us know those stories. We want to hear your stories about presents in Christmas's past that you have returned and what they were and tell us all about that. We'd love to hear that story. Uh, I've heard some great answers to this question before. One guy got a Richard Simmons workout video set for Christmas. I mean that's going ways, uh, ways back and I don't know if he makes those videos anymore. I don't even think you could return that today if you wanted to. Uh, there's a husband, get this, who got his wife a year's worth of Nutri-Food System food for Christmas. It's like, hmm, we know that's going back. Isn't that special? I wonder if those two are still together. I hope so. Well, what's the point of all this talk about returning gifts today? Uh, unless we stop and recap where we are at this point in the Christmas season. It's all about gift giving, and it's all about the gift of God's love for us. Christmas is love. His name is Jesus, and his name means God saves. That's what the name of Jesus means. So Christmas is the story about how God demonstrates his love to save us. Uh, so I look forward to spending this time with you. Thanks for engaging with Emmanuel Lutheran Church online. Thanks for being with us in Couch Church today. Uh, let's begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of this time in the Christmas season as we remember your birth into our world of sin and pain. You entered this world to be our Savior. Your birth brought God's peace to earth and fulfilled God's promise. Please be with our family and friends, loved ones, and strangers that they too may know your Christmas peace. It's in your holy name we pray this day. Amen.
Okay, as we focus our thoughts and hearts and lives on God's word and his promises, I want you to hear from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Uh, the way John approaches Jesus' life isn't quite like Luke. Luke gives a very uh, orderly account of exactly what happened in terms of how Jesus was born, where he was born, the events surrounding his birth. John takes a very different approach and he focuses on what Jesus is like. It's, it's like this light has been breaking into this world that's darkened by sin. And uh, listen, to, listen to this. I think it'll make sense uh, given that description. John, John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. So John, he says, he's not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. As we focus our hearts and lives on him, let's pray as we prepare to hear the message now. Loving God, Heavenly Father, in your gift of Jesus, we see your immeasurable love reaching out to all mankind, to absolutely everybody. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. We adore you. We thank you for your gift of grace and mercy this day. Help us hear your word by your Holy Spirit so that we might respond in repentance and faith. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Well, I really want to thank you for being here today, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas once again and a Happy New Year in just a few days. Uh, and by my count, it's still Christmas. It's the third day of Christmas, December 27th, 2020. Uh, and since it's still Christmas, I want to share with you a Christmas story, and it's a, it's a great story about a gift exchange or a gift return. And it's a story about a father and his four-year-old daughter his four-year-old daughter really wanted a pet. And this was okay, but this was not so good for his dad because his dad, or her dad, was really not into pets. However, uh, this four-year-old daughter had his, her way with him and uh, he gave in and said it's okay if she gets a pet. But he had some rules. There was some ground rules involved. Here were dad's rules for picking out a pet. Number one rule was it cannot bark, it cannot meow, it cannot make any sound whatsoever. Our house is already loud enough. Number two, this pet, whatever it is, it cannot have fur or hair or anything that sheds in the house. And number three, uh, you can get a pet, but it has to cost less than $5. Those were dad's rules which really ruled out a lot of different pets that this four-year-old daughter could choose from. So what did they end up getting for under $5 that didn't shed and didn't make a sound? Uh, they get a fish. They got a goldfish. What a great gift, hey? 
uh, what a great pet. Uh, they're really fun. Uh, even when they're swirling around the toilet bowl after they die, uh, that's a lot of fun to watch. Kidding, kidding. Uh, but it's true. Uh, they don't have a very long lifespan. Uh, so what do they do? Dad and their, his four-year-old daughter, they head to Walmart and they pick out this goldfish. Uh, one of the employees at Walmart in the pet department had written on a piece of paper with a marker. Here's the words that were written on this piece of paper. Three-day guarantee, no questions asked. So Walmart was guaranteeing the life of these fish for three days. So dad buys the fish, you know, and it's in that baggie, uh, and they take it home. Uh, the daughter names it Nemo, very appropriate, uh, not very original, but it was popular at the time. They get this fish home, and uh, she wants to play with it. His, his daughter wants to play with it. How do you play with a pet fish? You can't take it for a walk. What can you do with your pet goldfish? Well, I guess you could go swimming with it. Uh, they did have a backyard pool. And so, but dad knew that chlorine's bad for the fish and that's not a great idea. So what was dad's solution to this problem? Well, dad gets a big glass, a big clear glass, fills it with water, puts Nemo in the glass, takes it outside, sets it beside the pool at the pool's edge. And uh, his daughter, his four-year-old daughter's playing in the pool. And it's like they're swimming together. Fish is on the side of the pool, she's in the pool. Uh, problem solved. Right, everything's going just fine. And then at some point, dad looks over at the glass where Nemo was, and Nemo, living up to his name, had flip-flopped out of the glass into the pool. And now they're looking for Nemo uh, in the pool. Eventually, he spots him, and uh, he's having the time of his life. He's swimming back and forth. He's never been more free. And uh, dad realizes, I gotta get this fish out of the pool fast before it dies. Uh, catching the fish was harder than he thought. Little fish, big pool of water, really, really difficult kind of chore to fish this thing out. But then it got really, really easy because Nemo just simply floated to the surface and uh, the fish died and he scooped him up with the net. Now this is sad, this is sad. But there was some good news as well because dad remembered that handwritten note at Walmart. What did it say? Three day guarantee, no questions asked. So they, they put the dead fish back in the bag, take it back to Walmart. They see the exact same person who worked there that sold them the fish at the, in the first place. And the, the Walmart employee actually broke the policy and asked a question as she saw him carry in the dead fish. Like, what happened? And dad tells the truth and says simply, well, the fish drowned. Hands her the bag with the dead fish in it. She hands him a brand new fish full of life. Brand new fish and a living fish and they, t they, they head home with this fish. This is a uh, redemption story, a true life redemption story if I've ever heard one. Let's just say that some gifts, they just don't work out very well. Some gifts work out really well. This gift in particular worked out pretty well because there was a return policy. My guess is that part of your next week over Christmas in this season, you're going to keep some of your gifts and then there's gonna be some gifts you'll want to return. Yes, even those gifts that have been given out of love. The real meaning of Christmas is closer than you think to that story that I just told you about the dead fish turning that in and then exchanging it for a brand new one. Let's be clear and recap what Christmas really is. Because on Christmas Day, we celebrated together. Uh, so glad that you can join us. Uh, check it out if you missed it. Christmas is for all people, we found out. And today we add to that good news by remembering that not only is Christmas for all people, Christmas is love. It's about the greatest gift given by God, our Heavenly Father, to the whole world, and it's given out of love. The Bible says in John 3.16, the Bible is so clear on this, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God gives, and he gives the gift of his son, Jesus. Jesus as a gift. What a surprise. It's like one of those gifts that we get at Christmas. We never asked for it to begin with. We maybe never even wanted it. We didn't say we wanted it, and yet somebody went out and got it for us anyway. In fact, from the moment sin entered the world, God had been telling the world it's coming. What's coming? The coming of the gift of love. From the moment mankind decided, you know, we're going to define life, live life on our own terms. We're going to define right and wrong on our own terms. God's plan to give this gift went into effect. He says, I'm going to give the gift of a savior. So anyone who would hear that promise, who would listen by faith, knew a gift would be coming. And for the good news for us today, and anyone today hearing this good news of a promise of a gift who would listen by faith, even today can receive that gift that's been given. Paul, a first century follower of Jesus, describes the gift of love this way. Listen to these words. He says, but when the time was right, God sent his son and a woman gave birth to him. And we know who gave birth to him and that was Mary. And it says this, his son, God sent his son, his son obeyed the law so that he could set us free from the law and we could become God's children. And now that we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts and his spirit tells us that God is our father. You're no longer slaves, you're God's children, and you will be given what he has promised. On this day, we are reminded that Christmas is love. We're reminded of God's love for us. How did God show his love for us? How do you know God loves you? Well, it's because the law that God's son Jesus obeyed is the law of love. The law of love is love for God and love for our neighbors, love for one another, a love that if we're honest, let's be honest. Think about our lives. Think about our relationships in our lives with God. Think about our relationships with one another. Uh, we in our own lives have failed the law of love, a love that we fail to demonstrate because of sin in our hearts and lives, a, a law that we fail to uphold, a law that we fail to focus on because we're too busy focused on ourselves, a law we fail to live up to, a law we fail to listen to, a law, believe it or not, that we are powerless to keep as we should. And yet in our failure, we have one who would not fail for us. He came to fully demonstrate God's love for us and God's love, a love for our heavenly father. And so for this reason, all who believe the joy of Christmas is not just limited to celebrating his birth. Wouldn't that be something? Imagine if the good news were simply, well, a baby's been born, the end. Isn't that a cute story? Well, no, there's so much more here to Christmas. Christmas is built even more on the triumph of Jesus' death and resurrection. That gives meaning to his birth. In other words, we can take time to celebrate his birth, God coming to become one of us because of what he came to accomplish. We are now part of a gift exchange with an eternal and lasting impact. Have you noticed this time of year, the generosity, the spirit of generosity, which possesses so many of us to be sharing gifts with one another out of love? Have you noticed this? It's clearly an aftershock of what happened at Calvary's cross, not Calgary's cross, not Calgary, Alberta, but Calvary outside of Jerusalem where Jesus actually died on a cross. The fact that Jesus dies on a cross the cross illuminates these days of Christmas and makes these days even more holy for us as we exchange gifts with one another. We remember that these gifts are symbolic of the incredible 
and unspeakable love that God has for each and every one of us. Jesus at the cross, giving his life for us. Christmas really, it, it really isn't about us buying expensive things for each other and then exchanging those things, is it? And then returning the things that we never really wanted in the first place, is that really what Christmas is about? No, this is what it's all about. It's all about us quietly, humbly giving simple little gifts, our expressions of love and devotion to those who are our recipients, intended recipients. And these gifts merely being symbolic of the greater gift of God's love for us and for the whole world. Who could compare or what could compare to his sacrificial love for us? What could we possibly give that would compare to that kind of love? Because Christmas is for all. And because Christmas is love, you are invited now to take part in the greatest gift exchange in all of creation. As God came to earth as a tiny baby, he grew up, he lived a perfect life, the life that we should have lived. He suffered the death we should have died. And in so doing, exchanges our condemnation, our guilt, our death, and in exchange for his mercy, forgiveness, and life. We bring our lives dead in sin, dead in our trespasses against God and against one another, and in exchange, we give him our dead life and he gives us a brand new life. No questions asked. What better way to celebrate Christmas than to receive the good news of his precious gift of salvation, engage daily in the eternal exchange as his baptized, adopted, treasured, forgiven sons and daughters. He loves, he gives, we believe, and we live. Let's give God all the glory, all the thanks, all the praise, all the honor. Uh, let's pray. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, in your gift of Jesus, we see your immeasurable love reaching out to all mankind, to absolutely everybody. And as we reread the first Christmas story, God, would you renew our faith? For those who are listening today who would say they have no faith, Lord, would you create faith? For those, those of us who have faith, would you renew our faith and our confidence in your power and your strength and your love? Would you help us, God, to just go to you this Christmas with a spirit of confidence, knowing that you will help us in our time of need because you know what it's like to be one of us, to take our place. May we in these moments realize that a great exchange has taken place. The righteous one for the unrighteous. Our death in exchange for new life, one at the cross and in his resurrection. Lord, it's in your name, in the name of your one and only son that we pray this. Amen. Well, God be with you this week. Happy New Year. Blessings on the year ahead. Uh, as you receive God's word into your life once again. Have you looked around lately? The brokenness, the division, the hate. After a while, it begins to take a toll. We begin to view people differently. Servanthood gives way to skepticism. Faith transforms into fear. Love begins to languish under the weight of uncertainty. It's easy to become who we were never meant to be. Cynical, angry, lost. In moments like this, we're reminded of the lasting meaning of Christmas. A savior given to bear the weight of our sin, to mend our brokenness, to make whole our divisions. The love of God on full display, bringing light to the darkness, giving hope to the hopeless. 
this Christmas, in the midst of these difficult times, may we all remember just how desperately we still need a Savior. Thanks for joining us for Couch Church. Here's a few ministry highlights for you as we wrap up this year we call 2020. Uh, first off, uh, office hours uh, will be open, normal office hours, 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday, December 29th and the 30th. So we'll be open two days uh, this week ahead. Uh, as well, for those wishing to make offerings, give offerings to the church. Uh, you have those two days to bring those offerings in or to arrange for a pickup, that's fine too. We can uh, even arrange to pick up your offerings if you would prefer that way, or you can make uh, e-transfers. If you have any questions about that, please just call the office and talk to Charlotte. Uh, and then lastly, we've asked you to make some comments on some gifts that you've received in the past that once you've opened them, you knew almost immediately that you would return them. We want to hear your stories. We want to share those stories. So please comment below either on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear those stories today. All right. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Father's love begotten Ere the worlds began to be He is Alpha and Omega He the source, the ending He of the things that are that have been And the 
bright future you shall see evermore and evermore oh that birth forever blessed when the virgin fall of grace by the holy ghost conceiving for the savior of our race and the babe the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and ever Thank you. 